On today's episode, we're fishing with our good friend, world record holding French born fishing lure designer, Patrick Sabille. We met Patrick over a decade ago when he partnered with us to introduce his Sabille lures to Northeast anglers through the Striper Cup. Those original designs, the Sabille Magic Swimmer and the Stick Shed, quickly became must have striper plugs. Never one to sit still, Patrick sold his Sabille Lures brand and has launched a new venture named A Band of Anglers, giving him the freedom to develop a new generation of innovative lures. With a plug box full of new designs to field test on striped bass and bluefish, Patrick traveled from his home in Florida to join us on a fall run adventure in Cape Cod Bay. We met Patrick at Kingman Marina on Buzzards Bay for a pre-dawn passage through the Cape Cod Canal in order to reach the east end before sunrise. There, just outside the canal entrance, huge schools of peanut bunker had drawn in striped bass and bluefish, creating a prime opportunity to test Patrick's new topwater lures. Wow, a lot of fish around. Look, that one rolled right there. Yeah, I think it should. Patrick, this is you? Yeah, yeah. They're all over on both sides of the boat right now, guys. Kept tight. I just missed one. Oh, he's boiling on it. There he is. There you go. There you go. Right out of oh. the gate. Oh. So we just literally pulled through the canal. We haven't gone 100 yards and there's fish all around That's us right now. Both guys were doubled up. Yeah. Oh. Popped oh. off. There you go. Oh, tight again. I found a blue. That was good stuff. First cast, one bite, missed it. Second cast, one bite, missed it. On the retrieve, bite again. And third cast, since that fish is better hooked. So, here we are. Kev, I'm gonna just pull him into the boat. Kev, I'm gonna leave that fish to you and give him a hand. Bring it this way, Patrick. There you go. Whoa, big blue, huh? Patrick, that's unbelievable. I saw you cast, hook up, pop off, hook <laughs> up, pop off. And before he got it back to the boat, he's already on. There's just a ton of fish around us right now. Patrick, these are the new Lewis. This is the new, yeah. this is the new size. Yeah, the and new size of mastery and a beautiful green mackerel. And cast like a rocket. I know many people use that well, but I want, I want people to give it a try. And they will be amazed how far that the Astro can cast goes. a bit every other floating lure that I know. And well, when the distance is given, that's the thing. And the action is amazing. So it looks like there are blues, but there are some stripes yeah, Some stripes right in there, there too. Yeah. Definitely some striped bass. Definitely. So we're gonna Thank throw you. this one back in. Beautiful fish. They are a lot of fun. Hey guys, I'm gonna make a move in. Hang on. We're not going far. You guys seeing anything? So some birds, 11 o'clock, one of them died. Oh yeah, I just saw bass, just saw bass. Bass just roll right there. I just had a fish come right out of the water on it. Kev, what do you got? Bass, bluefish, what do you got, buddy? I don't know, I saw, I watched a bluefish miss it on top, and then another fish came back around and this grabbed it. This guy's staying down low, isn't he? It's definitely a mix of bass and blues. I pinch the barbs on this lure just to make it easier to catch and release the fish, whether it's bass or blues. Uh -huh. That's good. Now, what color do you have on, Kev? It's kind of a purplish color, which I think a lot of the bait has right now. Oh, 
Oh, another nice blow. Yeah, beautiful fish. Ah, gorgeous in this light too, huh? I'll tell you what, guys, we just got out here. Kevin's made probably two casts, three casts, two fish. Patrick's made three casts, two fish. These are actually delicious. A lot of people don't like the bluefish. I love them if they're prepared properly, but this guy, he's getting a stay of execution. Got a beautiful morning, end of September. There's schools of bunker out here, and what's happening, these bass are just being very opportunistic. They'll come up on that school, they'll bust on it, they'll, they'll slash through it, they'll move on to the next one. And, and there's that many schools out here, but. I wanna see how you work this lure. So. It's a floating lure. It is. The thing is, you can work it in a different way. You can have your, you know, typical walk the dog, but it's a bit irregular in the way that he may go on the top, he may dive a few inch. So it, at some points, it is right on the top like a regular walk the dog. Yeah, and then, and then he, I, all of a sudden I see it darts down. He darts down, and then you can have a sea retrieve where he oh, just no, swims just... just a little bit underneath. And sometimes when you have very finicky fish, that's all you want to do. I just give teeny hot twitches. Yeah, it's very responsive. Very, very responsive. Why does it beat in terms of distance over floating lures is the pointy noise. Ah. When you cast, every lure creates a turbulence behind the nose and it's like a suction cup. And you lose some of the energy or the power you gave to a lure when you cast because that effect. And the pointy noise not only gives a bit of erratic motion, it's great for walking the dog, it's great to have some slow uh, swim motion, but when you cast, basically there's almost no turbulence in the nose. And that's, that's why, that's what makes it such an incredible long distance bay. Now we're on the boat, that's not where we need the most the distance, but when you are from the shore with a surf rod, then that's when it really matters. Yeah. yeah. So you see, when you make a little pause and then you twitch it, then you have a, a almost, little popping action. It almost jumps. Yes. Like a, you know. It looks like a real bait fish, the way it is. Yeah. I really love that bait. There's fish all around. Patrick, how are you working this one? So uh, you go walk the dog, and one beautiful thing is you can make pause and it's very much wide open, like 180 degree when you want to make some pause with that guy. Make pause, like? You can make a pause or a slow walking the dog and you literally open 180 degree. And you know, sometimes you want to fish slow and that's the main beauty of, of this one. Oh, he's on me. Look at him, look at him, right behind my lure. Oh, missed it again. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> Oh, he just whacked it again! <laughs> ah. Right out of the water! <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick, he knocked it a foot and a half out of the air and his tail exploded on it. No, oh, like mine. There you go. There he goes. All right, I'm gonna come right in behind you. We'll see if we go. can double yeah. up. Cast behind me, definitely. They are coming out of the water for that's this what, plug. That's what mine did. A little bit better fish, I think. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. welcome to the that's back of the boat. That's a monster. That is a that's big fish. Hey guys, let him pass you. That's a, that is a big fish. Good, good, blue, good solid blue fish here. On the Astoria 170 green mackerel. There you go. I think your uh, your big lure really pulled the bigger bluefish out. Hey, it's not a full rule, but it's quite often true, as you know. That's a gorgeous bluefish. You got him, Patrick. You need a hand. I should be good. There you go. Patrick, that is a that's, that is a huge bluefish. That's really good, good. 
good, good one. That's a teen. <laughs> That's a teen sized bluefish, definitely. Look at that. He Ooh. wanted that big plug, too. Oh, yeah. That was the first swirl behind the lure, and I keep twitching, I make a pose, and the next time I twitch, boom! I got it. <laughs> Coming to Cape Cod to enjoy time with my friends here and my friends there. Yes. <laughs> Striped bass and bluefish, definitely the, the two stars of the fall run. Oh, yes. So fun. All right. All right. See you next time. Such a strong fish, you know? Beautiful. Oh, okay, I'm gonna come back in your hand, Kevin. Look at all the peanut bunker he's spitting up. Look at them all. Oh, okay. I took the barbs off, so it should be. I got my pliers here. There we go. And beautiful colors on these. I got this one's kind of a white on top, chrome on the sides. Yeah, that's a great versatile bait, both for boat and shore fishing. When you're in a canal, when you're on the beach, you can rely on the estuary to be one of your go-to, true go-to bait. Oh, there here you go. He came right up and <laughs> just kept teasing him. Never stopped moving yet, you know? Just kept going. Whoa, I'm on. Oh, yeah. Yo. Whoa, <laughs> there he is, Patrick. I that's, saw him come right out of the that's water. That's a good one. That's it's, excellent. I saw the head. That's a good one. <laughs> oh boy. So what we did out here is that these lures are bringing these fish up so easily. What we did is we bent the barbs down. Just makes for an easy release when we got these big blue fish. Oh, that's a nice one, Patrick. <laughs> I'm trying to get mine oh, up. Man. You want to have fun? Come fishing in Cape Cod oh. for stripers and blues and you will have fun, that's for sure. Patrick, that is another slob. Tripled up right now, guys. I got oh, a striper. striper. Kevin is on a striper. That is, that's sure. what fall fishing is all about, is you get this mix. Stripers and blues feeding together. All right, Patrick, beautiful fish. Thank you. You know, Kevin was saying it earlier and he really hit the nail on the head. This is fall fishing at its finest, right? We've got yeah, yeah. bass and blues, big schools, peanut bunker everywhere, top water action. These fish are just coming up and exploding on it. These are just some horse blues in here right now. I had a bluefish on the lure and pulled the hook. It came off, and as it got away from the bluefish, the striper grabbed it. So I think they're just all mixed in, eating together. Again, barbless hook, so that came off easy. Nice, healthy striper. And I'm going to get him back in. These bluefish are so ferocious that any time that that lure gets in front, the bluefish are beating the bass to the lure. What's nice is that with those barbs bent backwards, guys, this is going to be a real easy release. Just roll it over and this fish would pop right out. There they go. There's fish all around, but I think there may be bass in a little tighter here. All right, boys. All lines in, I'm gonna move us right up on top of these. Look at this right here, you see Patrick back here? Oh, they are everywhere.
God. That is gorgeous. You don't get a better presentation. Oh, you're right on him. Boom. Look at this. I'm going to get in on it. He came to the surface and exploded, you know? You see it out there, Kev? What are you thinking? I, I may have a striper on mine, Kev. You got a nice striper. Oh, yeah. You need a hand? Yes, I would love a hand, Patrick. I'm coming for so, the hand. One of the things that Patrick said to me early on that really resonated was the fact that with this Hastree lure, you can fish it slow, you can fish it fast, you can fish it any speed, and that's exactly what I did. I was getting a lot of bluefish. I slowed it down, twitch, 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 slowed it down, and it came up and exploded right when I stopped it. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Uh -huh. uh -oh. I'll tell you why. <laughs> yeah. This is why Patrick comes up here, you know. He's come up here, we've caught a little bit of everything, but the one thing that I would say is your favorite is striped bass. Oh, man, yes. But one of the things that he designed early on, it was the lure that we all fell in love with, was the Magic Swimmer and the Stick Shad. And both of those lures were lures that just took over the Northeast, especially up here on the canal. <laughs> Oh, look at that. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. All right, I'm going into the game now. I think there's some over here, Patrick. Mm. <laughs> A fish or two, maybe. Maybe. Oh! I got a nice striper. There's some bigger bass in this blitz. I knew he was gonna do that. Oh, it's a good size striper. I stopped that, uh, I was working it and just came to a complete stop and he just smoked it. Good, healthy, I think that's a slot size striper, but we're gonna let him go. Beautiful fall Cape Cod striped bass on top water. That is fun. There he goes, awesome. Where did that school go though? There was a lot of fish right on the top. So now Patrick, we've mixed things up now. We've gone to a soft plastic. Talk to me a little bit about your, your, uh, your soft plastics and what we're fishing now. Yeah, we are using mostly two soft plastics. The sand eel, which is basically a long slender body with a long paddle tail and the curly mean, which is a big curly tail, but thin. And I like to use both because they really complement each other a lot. So that's what we have right here. You and I have so the curly So you have the tail. curly mean, and this guy right here, which I have a, a different rod, is the sand eel. The sand eel so, with a little bit of a paddle tail there. Yeah, that guy have a paddle tail. Both of them are made of soft stuff, like the dart spin, which you know and Look love. Look at the screen right now. I'll keep talking. I'm gonna oh, go ahead and yeah. drop down because I we think there's drop. some fish directly below the boat. So the big difference it's between the two is the down. type of action. Being made with soft stuff, it's much more kicking than regular soft plastic, so the overall body moves a lot yeah. when you retrieve the sand eel. Now, the, uh, the curly mean is a curly tail, so it allows you for very slow action. And as you know, sometimes you need slow action. And also at the opposite, you can go super fast and it don't make any resistance. You can yeah. go as fast as you want for both striped bass and also for tuna, actually. Right now, there's fish below the boat, and it's just a matter of, of kind of moving around. There he is. I was teasing him up and he just, he finally hit. What I did is using my Simrad Electronics, I got a 24 inch screen, that's what I started fishing right there. So what we did is we changed it up, one with a soft plastic. I dropped down the curly tail sand eel, just worked it along the bottom, and I got a nice striped bass. Really full striper on the curly man. Uh, probably 30, 30 something, 32. But a nice fish. Patrick, you want to grab yep, him? Yep. There you go, Patrick. Here we Beautiful are. fish, really healthy. Absolutely oh, gorgeous fish. Huh? Look at that, gorgeous fish. 
Changing your tactics depending on what's happening with your current and tide can produce really nice fish along with being in tune with what you're throwing. And that's what we did, Patrick. The screen was telling us we should go low. Then, we broke out some of your sand nails yeah. and then Patrick picked out the pattern. There's a gorgeous fish. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pop that. Patrick, beautiful fish. Let's get this fish back yeah, in the water. I'm just gonna put it in gear and let it swim for a second along the boat. Is there anything else? And there's more on the bottom right now. They're down on the bottom. I'm dropping to the bottom. I'm just burning it in. I got the sand eel on, I just tried to burn it across the surface and I think a bluefish whacked it. He's got a bunch of Look fish right with here, him. Right here. Look at them all. It's about a dozen That's fish. That's a bass. There was a bass in there. You gotta hook up. They were right behind him. I think they're eating whatever uh, peanut bunker it pukes up. Look at on up. the bottom. There he is, right on the bottom. Oh, a lefty reel though. Patrick, just like you said, another bluefish hooked in the corner of the mouth. And the soft plastic safely outside. Look at all, look at all the peanut bunker. So look at that, no damage to the soft plastic, stayed on the outside just like Patrick designed. All good and well hooked can see what that bluefish was eating. He threw up a whole bunch of peanut bunker. They're really just fattening up for the fall run right now. Stripers and blues making their way south, stopping here at Cape Cod at the east end of the canal and filling up and then heading on their way. Kev, when I looked behind us, they were looking, they were just down on the bottom. So I grabbed the only thing I could grab, which is this conventional, dropped it down. You didn't check the handle first. Didn't check the you handle. You grabbed the lefty reel. Gorgeous bass, though. Gorgeous bass. It was a bass behind I, those bluefish? I blue saw fish? all of them were bass behind the bluefish that I dropped down on. It makes sense. When you saw that bluefish come in and it threw up all those peanut bunker, that's an easy meal. Patrick, you see this guy? Oh, wow. Showing off for the camera. Kevin, when the bluefish went by, there had to be five or six of these fish following yeah. right behind it. Oh, give him some support. Oh, 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 oh. Kevin, that's gorgeous, beauty. huh? Look at that thing. And look at the jig. And you see, and again, the big benefit is there, that cut on the back. You see, you use the, the all You got the whole hook, yeah. Of the, the hook. whole oh, yeah. hook. He stayed button. He, uh... You want to pop that out, Chris? Yeah, I will. Go ahead. There we go. Here we go. Look at that. Beautiful. And you grab the back of the tail and then you can release. There it goes. It wants to go. The striped bass and blues continue to feast late into the morning. Patrick Stabile's new lure designs passed the test with fall run okay. bass and blues, and he left plenty behind for us to field test when the striper migration returns to New England this spring.